Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week where, as always, we get to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, before I get into the, uh, the brand new knives so far, i got a quick announcement to make. Uh, we recently hit uh, 200,000 subscribers or followers on our Instagram channel. Uh, so for that, we're doing a giveaway over there as a, as a big 200K thank you to everyone. And this is the knife we are giving away, and this giveaway is launching today, in fact. Uh, this is a Greg Lightfoot Custom. This is his Catalyst model, and this is a full custom piece we're giving away. Uh, thanks to the generosity of our good friend Greg Lightfoot graciously gave this, uh, essentially gave this to us to give away to you folks as part of our thank you. So we thank him for that in addition to uh, to all you followers. Really cool knife, uh, three and three eighths of an inch or thereabouts on the blade, CPM 154. Really cool profile, got a hint of recurve there. Uh, not compound ground, but very precisely ground. And then you've got kind of Lightfoot's signature move. You've got that swedge there on one side of the blade. You can see it here. It's nice and deep, but you don't see that on the opposite side. Kind of one of his, like I said, signature moves. It looks really good. The handles, we've got a blue lightning strike carbon fiber with tie mascus bolsters over a bead blasted titanium is what it looks like anyway on the, uh, the nice thick liners there. And it looks like carbon fiber on the backspacer as well. Really nicely put together. Obviously you're getting custom fit and finish with this because it is a full custom. Nice pocket clip there, milled out of titanium. Lock bar is kind of recessed a little bit. There's not super or uh, not a crazy amount of access for it, but it works pretty well. And the flipping action works really well also. Just all around a fantastic piece. Going to one lucky winner at our Instagram page. We'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description there. Uh, and if you're not following us, you should follow us. Actually, that's part of the rules to, uh, to get this. So check out the full details over there. And thanks again to Mr. Lightfoot for the knife. We really appreciate it, man. All right, next up is the return of an older model. Discontinued by Kershaw a while back, the random leak is back. It's the same uh, leak frame you know and love, but with a blade kind of inspired, I believe it was by the random task initially, which is another model in their lineup at the time this came out. So you get this kind of modified uh, sheep's foot profile as opposed to the modified Warncliffe of the, uh, the previous version. I guess we, we could call that a reverse Tonto maybe. But you know what the, you know what it looks like. Very cool. Uh, two tiers. Obviously, we've got the the uh, standard stainless steel version. This guy comes in about fifty five bucks right now. Fourteen C twenty eight N Sandvik blade. Love that steel. Takes a nice fine edge very easily. And you're just under three inches on the blade length here. Now the actual edge here itself is a little bit different than the uh, the standard. Uh, in addition to having a different spine treatment, you've got a little bit more belly, I think on this blade shape rather than the, uh, the, the more pointier, pokier blade of the standard version. You still have a nice pokey tip though, only it's a little bit stronger than the, uh, than the other guy because you have a little bit there, a little bit more there behind the tip. Still has a hollow grind, still razor sharp, and still very fast action too because you've got that speed safe assisted opening action. Really cool. Uh, on the top of that, we've got the black wash version, which is black wash blade and stainless steel frame there. Uh, this guy's a little bit more expensive, comes in about 68 right now. So it's a fair bit of a, of a jump to get this particular finish, but it is a very good looking finish at that. And a little bit of a, uh, a fun fact, a little bit of uh, inside baseball for folks out there. Uh, the original random task was originally an exclusive for Chesapeake Knife and Tool. They're out of business now. Uh, but our buyer here, uh, Mr. Jason Kunkler, used to work there at the time when this became their exclusive. Uh, so there's a neat bit of a uh, neat, neat connection to this model with us here at the Knife Center. I actually remember shopping at uh, Chesapeake Knife and Tool a lot back in the day. They used to have storefronts in the malls of all places. You don't really see that anymore these days. What, malls? Well, yeah, malls in general, but knife stores and malls. Yeah, mall, malls have fallen on hard times too. Um, but it's cool to see that model back in the rotation uh, from Kershaw. U.S. made, gotta love it. Uh, speaking of some cool U.S. made stuff, significant upgrades from Buck to their kind of their classic hunting fixed blade lineup. Uh, you can see immediately we've got 
uh, well, I've got two models here. I've got the, I always forget the number of the Skinner. It's the 103 and we've got the 119 here at the top. Green canvas micarta handles as opposed to the, uh, the old plasticky handles. I forget what material they're using, but a really nice polished green canvas. It looks really good. Same shape overall as the, uh, as those standard versions. And you've even got the spacers in the bolster and the butt cap are from micarta as well might be real hard to see on camera, but you get a hint of that weave, but it looks like a, it's kind of a browner color, more of a dark natural or a dark brown micarta contrasting with the green looks really cool. On top of that, and even more of a materials upgrade, we've got S35 VN on the blades now. Very, very big jump up from the 420 HC on their standard models. Uh, pricing is going to be a decent jump as well. The 119 here comes in at 190. Uh, the 103 Skinner here is about 150, uh, but we've got the uh, the Woodsman Pro. These actually that they add Pro to all of these, so this is the 119 Special Pro. I had to make sure they kept the special in the name. Um, but the the cheaper or least expensive one starts about 130, and we've even got the uh, the bigger 120 that comes in at 200 bucks. Really cool, and it's really cool to see them stepping up the game on these models with these materials. Uh, some might say it's long overdue. I'm just happy it's here because they look fantastic and they should perform really good too. We've also got another upgraded buck. This one, rather than a, uh, a 119 Pro or something like that, this is part of their legacy collection. This is the 55 model. Again, upgraded handle and blade steel in this case, S30V. Blade length under two and a half inches, so very svelte, nice, easy, slim carry. This make a great gentleman's knife with that marbled carbon fiber on the inlay as well. Price on these are 140, made in the USA, and these are uh, a limited edition for 2021. Unlike the uh, the Pro models we just looked at, this guy is not going to be around forever. So keep that in mind. Lock back here at the end, just like their classic folding hunters. Folds up nice and slim. Again, real easy carry, no pocket clip, um, but this is more like kind of an old school slip joint just with the lock back there. Throw it in the bottom of your pocket, maybe in that fifth watch pocket in your jeans. It's gonna be really cool. All right, next up and at long last, Knight Elements. We've got their, uh, their Ultra V2 Ultra Kukri flippers. Uh, Knight Elements, of course, is Jason Knight, very famous bladesmith. You may have seen him on Forged in Fire and three new folders and uh, some fixed blade versions of this as well. But man, check these folders out. Uh, started about 285 for the G10 version uh, or 295, 10 bucks more for this Micarta version that also gets a black blade. Uh, you can also get a black blade with the black G10 for that same price. Um, as partial as I am to Micarta, and I am very partial to it, I kind of like the, uh, the G10 one better because I'm also very partial to a stonewashed blade finish, which is what you get on this particular one. Now, as for that blade, we're just over four inches on this. Um, so if you need something under four inches, this isn't quite gonna be hitting that mark. Uh, N690 steel here, so pretty good performance. And as you can see, these are actually made uh, for Jason Knight by Fox Knives over in Italy. So if you're familiar with their stuff, you're getting a similar degree of quality here, which is to say you're getting a good amount of quality for sure. We've got titanium on the back with a frame lock right there and a single position pocket clip in this case. It's held in place by kind of a single oversized stud here. It kind of echoes the same styling as the pivot hardware as well. So that's kind of a neat looking touch actually. Got a lock bar insert on the blade, ball bearings in the pivot, and also a ceramic detent on this guy as well. And the flipping action on this guy works out quite well does flip open very nicely. As far as the hold in the hand, I've got enough room for my slightly larger than average hands there, no problem. Uh, maybe if I were wearing gloves, it might be a little too small, uh, but it's borderline. But anyway, definitely a lot of length there to hold on to, to put this knife to work. And you're gonna wanna put this knife to work because it's got this aggressive profile. Obviously a kukri, very good at chopping, but this is a folding kukri and it's short, so this is not exactly a chopper, um, but you're gonna be able to pull off some aggressive cuts thanks to the added edge and the angles you get from that recurve, especially on draw cuts. It's also gonna make a pretty good tactical option, the way the point sticks down the way it does or, or angles down the way it does. It's gonna be very intuitive to point it where you want to go without having to think too much extra about it. And actually, before we move on, I've got one more thing I really like about this knife, and that's the uh, the dual fullers on this guy. 
For one thing, they look really good when it's open. Very nice. But when it's closed, also, it gives you an extra opening method. You can essentially use that fuller closer here towards the tip to start with as another thumb opening device and just rotate the blade open. And as you go, your thumb is going to kind of ride that fuller towards the heel. It's actually pretty easy to do. So you can be a little less flashy with your flashy folder. <laughs> uh, very cool knives, guys. Check those out. All right, next up, we're going to go to another tactical folder, more of a classic, really, but an updated version of the CQC7 now in flipper form as well, coming in about 243, 244 right now, uh, showing you right here the uh, partially serrated version. We've got S35VN on the blade here, nice stone washed finish, uh, about 3.3 inches in that classic kind of CQC7 Tonto shape with that chisel grind, kind of signature em Emerson element on the back. Speaking of Emerson's signature elements, you've got the ambidextrous thumb disc, so opening with the thumb with either hand is easy. You've got their patented wave opening feature, so you can use that as a pocket deployer, should you wish. Gives you nice rapid access as you draw it from your pocket. But now, you've got, I guess it's kind of their version of the, uh, the triway system, but instead of hinderer where they add extra, or three pivot options, you've got three opening options here. Thomas didn't laugh at my joke, but that's okay. Nope. Um, but you've got the uh, you've got the flipper tab now as well. Ball bearings, nice action, nice and smooth, uh, smoother even than the uh, the CQC eights that came out. I think it was last year, maybe even the year before. Now, um, even smoother execution now than those. Titanium liners, liner lock, G10, slightly less aggressive than they used to be um, for some folks out there. I know that's uh, that's going to be nice to hear. We've also got single position pocket clip, but it is that popular three hole pattern. So a lot of aftermarket stuff will fit if you wish to upgrade stuff, but it's just, you know, bona fide tactical classic. Now you've got that flipper tab for that extra opening option and even more index finger protection. Thanks to the integrated guard, kind of hard to go wrong, really. All right, next up, we're going to go to Benchmade with a new automatic. This is the auto fact. Uh, this guy comes in at 340 and you've got a lot of upgrades over on this guy over some of the standard versions. Uh, first and foremost, S90V blade steel, four inches of it. So you've got a lot of edge to work with uh, and it's a DLC coating on this guy. It's got a nice narrow profile, certainly very agile, very tactical feeling in nature, but you get, uh, you get some benefits in EDC as well because it's a long edge, but like I said, it is very agile. You can kind of go around corners a little bit easier. You've got a lot of precision with that tip as long as you control that nicely, really nice. Now the handles themselves, we've got aluminum. The, uh, the bolster on the front and back here is actually integrated. It's a single piece. You can see here the, uh, the aluminum on the spine shot here, just a single piece with space for a carbon fiber inlay, which looks quite good. We've got a deep carry pocket clip as well that is reversible, which is always nice on such an ambidextrous lock like this axis lock, this automatic axis lock actually. You've even got that secondary spine mounted safety there. It's going to hold it in the open or the closed position. It's always nice to see a knife like this have that complete ambidextrous capability, just a mirror image, no matter which side you use. As you can see, pull back on that crossbar lock and the action takes over. Just a really nicely executed piece. And now for another automatic that's a little bit weird. Uh, and that's because this is actually a prototype that we've got right now from D rocket designs. Uh, you guys kind of ate up his, uh, his last batch of stuff really quickly. And actually the closing on this guy, uh, is kind of strange. Well, I, I guess you, I should tell you what it is, huh? Uh, it's the, uh, the mid tech fat boy prototype OTF comes in a little bit under 500 right now. Uh, yeah, 475 obviously because of the prototype status that makes it a little bit more special. Now it may be hard to tell what kind of action we've got going on here because there's a slider, but there's also a button here. This is actually a single action OTF. The slider here is actually a secondary safety that's going to hold it or keep it from being unlocked and also keep that button from being pressed. So you can't, uh, you can't fire that blade and unlocking is where it gets a little bit weird. We've actually got a locking tab here on the side and you have to push that this way in order for the charging handle to work. And I guess it it's probably works better for lefties that who might be closing this, you know, holding the blade in their right hand. Cause I have to kind of wrap my finger around it, push that tab up and then pull the charging handle, push it back a little bit funky, but you do get some nice snappy action from it. 
Uh, blade steel on this guy's M390. This is a uh, California compliant model. We're under two inches on there. Nice pocket clip here. Uh, looks uh, not reversible. It doesn't look reversible uh, and it isn't, <laughs> uh, but it is nice and deep carry. It's going to hold it in there nice and easy. Uh, but again, this is a prototype uh, and this, you know, we don't have quantities of this. It's the one guy. So um, I do hope this is still in stock by the time this video posts, but if not, I do apologize to you folks out there, but we've got some other D rocket stuff uh, to kind of assuage you. If you'd miss out on that guy, this is called the baby X compact flipper. And this guy comes in at uh, at 350 bucks right now, fair bit of money for this guy. The blade is a stainless Damascus. I'm not quite sure uh, exactly what they're using. Carbon fiber on the front, titanium frame lock on the back. And this is not exactly a fast flipping knife, but it is a precisely engineered and precisely put together knife. Just the, the joins between the two sides, as you can see, we've got no backspacer here. Both sides of that mate up perfectly right there in the middle. And yeah, like I can't, I can barely even feel the, the edge with my fingernail. It's so precise. You got a little bit of jimping on the titanium side, matches the blade itself. And remember what I said about this is not really a great flipper, yeah, there's not a heck of a lot going on there. This is more of a much slower, more deliberate type of roll, but it's a really cool utility knife. Go great in that fifth pocket because no pocket clip on this guy. Nice bit of contour to the handles itself. Feels nice, not a ton of grip, but as a small custom style utility knife, it is pretty cool. All right, next up is kind of in, in my eyes, the coolest thing I've seen from him so far. Um, and it's not because I'm a pen junkie because I'm not really, but this is a really cool new take on a bolt action type of pen. It's something I've never seen before. So I guess that's why it stands out more to me. Um, cost is, is high up there too on this guy, 450, uh, zirconium construction, but the bolt action itself shares, uh, kind of shares the, uh, the platform with the pocket clip there. You don't have a separate, uh, bolt to actuate the blade that pocket clip actually scoots over to the side like that. Got a nice smooth section here and it tucks in a little bit more once you uh, twist it around. So it's not sticking out quite as much. And then when you're done with it, simply flip, flip it back and you're ready to, uh, to slide it back in your pocket. Writing experience on these guys. Um, I haven't written with this because I don't have this kind of money, um, but it takes a Parker style cartridge. So there's a wide variety of stuff out there. Feels pretty good in the hand. You've got a nice, um, a nice shape to it. It's a little bit flattened, kind of rectangular, and you don't get any, any kind of taper down here towards the tip. So you don't really see uh, the tip of the, the ballpoint cartridge quite so much, but it should write quite smoothly. And it just looks really special. All right, keeping the expensive train rolling. I apologize to, uh, to the budget buyers out there. We have a few things coming up that are a bit cheaper. Um, New Medford's, this is the Gentleman Jack. Uh, kind of a nice name there, nod to the whiskey, but this is a classic jackknife in that this is a slip joint construction. So in a way it's very unmedford, but it's a very Medford take on an unmedford style. I really like it. Uh, 375 on these guys. You've got S35 VN blade steel, three and a quarter inches long, and the handles are anodized titanium. This one is bronze, a few different colors. It picks up uh, fingerprints really aggressively. Um, so you'll want to either keep it clean or just kind of roll with it, but at least it's not going to patina like brass, actual brass will. There's a nice touch here on the spine that I really like, or on the, uh, the leaf spring, I should say, that's not the spine of the knife, uh, kind of engraved in script here, made in the United States. I dig that. The action on these are pretty good. You got a nice half stop there and a decent snap on the close as well. Because of the materials they use on the handle here, it feels a little bit different than a lot of kind of old school slip joints I'm used to. It's not an old school slip joint, obviously. Uh, opens up pretty good too. But as to the feel, because these handles are like solid titanium, you have a kind of a feel of solidity and the, the way it closes is, I don't know, like a little more final sounding than, than on a, uh, like a bone handled slip joint. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but it makes sense to me here in my head anyway. It's just like, that's the word that comes to mind. Just, I don't know, a very, definitive stop on the close. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, nice classic profile, very simple in its, uh, in its shape. It's going to work really well. You've got that nice blade shape going on, opens up real easy. Thanks to the dual, 
uh, essentially dual fullers, but kind of dual long pulls on the uh, right on the spine of that knife. There, it's not a, uh, a finger. Fing it's not a fingernail breaker at all. It's just very cool. All right, how about another expensive slip joint? You got it. <laughs> a big new batch of ADV recently. Um, lots more than just the uh, these impy slip joints, but we've got a bunch of fixed blades and uh, flippers as well. So we'll leave a link just to all of our ADV selection below. But this is one of his impy slip joints. This guy comes in at 425. Now, one of the things I've always liked about Andre's slip joints are, I don't know, it's it's very much his style. Like this is kind of instantly recognizable as something he has made, but it has, it's just kind of a remix on all those classic elements you used to see on fancier slip joints. You've got the bolsters here. You've got the long, the, uh, the hot dog shield there on the front, some nice uh, classic materials. This particular one uh, is fossilized mammoth bark. That's pretty darn cool. But yeah, it's just, it's kind of rare to see this, this synthesis of that kind of old school styling completely reimagined yet still instantly grounded in that classic look. I, they're just really nicely done that way. Blade here, obviously is a very fat looking guy here. Three inches of VG 10 Damascus, nice broad profile. Feels like you get, you could get some decent work done with a slip joint like this. There's plenty to hold onto on the handles, kind of a three and a half finger grip for me. The blade itself, you got a lot there to work with given it's, it's short size for sure, but it feels very solid. Action on these guys, really nice too. Uh, even, even snappier than that Medford we just looked at, but kind of similarly, dual long pulls makes it easy to open as well. I can't say enough cool things about these, uh, about these MPs. They're just fantastically done. And next up, uh, we've got a new Boker, and I think this might actually be my favorite knife here on the table. Um, which is hard, uh, hard for me to say because I thought for sure it was going to be one of these buck pros here. Those, those are really cool, but look at this Boker. This boxer is just out of this world. Now they're also quite expensive. This is, uh, just under 525 blade here, a uh, bit over three inches. And this is a dragon skin Damascus, really very striking pattern there going on. You've got instead of uh, kind of wavy layers, you've got all these, uh, this honeycomb kind of reptilians type of scale skin, whatever you want to call it, that looks, looks just awesome. The handles look awesome against the blackness or the, uh, the blackened nature of that blade. We've got red burlap micarta with stainless bolsters. Uh, but here's where it starts to pull ahead and you start to look at some of the fine details that do set this knife apart. For one thing, the bolsters themselves are dovetailed. This is not just, you know, a straight across laid in bolster with a, uh, an inlay slapped onto the side. They're very carefully fitted. And that's something you don't really see often, if hardly at all on production level folders, usually you have to spring for custom stuff for things like that. You can also see when you look at the back there with that dovetail nature, just how seamless that back is as well. We've also got a nice touch here on the lock bar release. It's not just, flat across there either. You've got the jimping, but you've got essentially a, uh, a, a half circle or a crescent circle lopped off the edges of there of, of the uh, lock bar itself. Kind of like they've crowned it, but just in that section there looks really cool. Feels really good. Unlocks quite nicely. I don't know you guys. I'm just, I'm really enamored with this particular knife. There is something about it uh, that is just extremely special. All right, we're finally coming back down now to some more affordable stuff uh, with another Boker. This is the Bonfire. This is a front flipper coming in at $67 and some change right now. Um, I like this guy very much too. It has kind of an old school single blade trapper vibe, kind of the, the large single blade trappers out there. Blade length, almost three and a half. D2, full flat grind. Nice satin finish going on there. And looking at it, yeah, man, continuous curve to the edge itself there, even back here near the heel, it starts all the way back there. You've got this nice graceful shape going on. And the handles here are micarta, um, green micarta again. And it's kind of cool to see, um, this has sort of a kind of a, we'll, we'll call it a satin finish for the purposes of this discussion compared to that night kukri with a matte finish. Hold these carefully and those bucks with a polished finish. So you, 
kind of get to see three different characteristics of a green micarta uh, in this particular video. Just depends on how you treat the material. You can make it look uh, a few very different ways. Now due to the shape of that handle, again, very classically uh, classic trapper inspired, plenty of length there to hold on to for me. Deep carry pocket clip on the right side as well, and a liner lock to keep it locked up. Uh, interestingly, despite being a front flipper, you, you've actually still got the nail nick like the classic slip joint, so you can still open it very easily two-handed. Um, I wasn't having the best luck doing front flipping, although I did get it there. You can also do kind of a conventional flipper action with this guy as well because of the way it's oriented there on the top side of the blade. I guess it's more of a top flipper really than a front flipper. So it's going to work whether you're uh, good at front flipping or not. Just a really, really cool piece. Uh, in addition to this, we've also got a, uh, a wood handled option. You can get this with a Bubinga wood as well uh, for the same price. All right, next up, uh, expensive again, uh, another expensive boker, uh, another collectible boker. This is part of a new batch of mono uh, folding hunters. This guy comes in at 450 here. Uh, in addition to a, a green curly birch, um, a couple other handle materials, we've also got the uh, kind of more natural dyed curly birch on this guy. Blade is Damascus, a bit over three inches. Kind of a uh, kind of a Barlow inspired look a little bit with this particular knife. Um, not quite, but it, it kind of gives me a little bit of those vibes. And as you can see, serialized here on the back, this is number 23 out of 90. Again, classic pocket knife vibes, but you do have a, uh, a back lock in this case with a protruding tab here rather than a, uh, a cutout in the handle itself. Works very easily as a result. You can just push that down, no problem with your thumb. But at the same time, if you're actually uh, you know putting this knife to some work, you might be worried about uh, maybe a strong grip disengaging that. I don't think that's really going to be the case. The way it hits is is kind of off axis a little bit, and it does require a fair fair bit of direct inline pressure to disengage this. So your mileage may vary, of course, but kind of a cool different take on the classic lockback. All right, next up we've got a Boker Plus. This is the Catalyst coming in at uh, about one twelve fifty. Oh, that's interesting two catalysts this week. There's a joke in there. Thomas is not on the ball today. He's I think he's sick or something. Anyway, this is another catalyst it comes in about 11250. Uh, three inch blade D2 steel here. Nice shape going on. You've got a subtle clip point here with a crown spine. It's a nice combination of features there. Uh, again, kind of dual long fullers. We've seen that a few times on the table today. The handles are a bead blasted titanium, kind of classic, uh, classic treatment of this type of material. Frame lock there, kind of drop shut as well. Not, uh, not super heavy, but it certainly closes up quite easily. Milled titanium pocket clip on the right side there, kind of an open back, going to be very easy to keep clean. Some good flipping action as well. Nice gentleman's pattern. Um, I almost want to say it's a little Quakenish, but it, it's not really. You've got Almost a straight back profile though, just that subtle bit of clip point taken out. Um, but yeah, really cool, very usable, classy shape. All right, here's the part of our program where we get a little funky, get a little weird with this new Boker Fragment. Uh, it's a slip joint coming in a bit over 41 bucks right now. So decently affordable. You got a 9CR blade, a uh, bit over two inches with this kind of cleavery profile, uh, not an oversized cleaver, and a G10 uh, kind of pivot stay here at the front. There's also a version with a uh, with a tumbled uh, metal or tumbled steel there as well to match kind of the rest of this stone washed finish going on. It's kind of a, a bare minimalistic reimagining of knives. It's got just the bare essentials to work. You've got the nice half stop provided by the leaf spring there works just like any other slip joint has some decent action as well. But you've also got a finger guard on a uh, on a slip joint, which is something of a rarity. It's not exactly going to protect your finger if the blade were to happen to close suddenly on you. But it is enough to help uh, keep you or keep your finger from moving forward, I should say. Got a pocket clip, almost the same full width of the handle there, gonna be a pretty minimalistic carry. I don't know, there, there's something about this I really like too. It's, it's a little bit different, certainly very functional, it's very affordable as well. It's gonna be nice and lightweight too. Uh, it's just over an ounce 
uh, in its heft there, 1.2 ounces. So yeah, I mean, good in the pocket, very easy and unnoticeable there. I also think it wouldn't be bad on a, uh, a keychain as a keychain knife. You could certainly take the pocket clip off in that case, but you've got a, uh, a nice lanyard hole here at the back that's, there's not a lot around it. So it'd be pretty easy, I think, to get a nice split ring around that and take it with you on your keys every day without even really looking like a knife too much. You know, for folks in the know, like you and me, we'd probably be able to tell what it was, but maybe not everyone out there. All right, one more slip joint and uh, another affordable slip joint this time. Uh, another Boker, this is the Atlas. It comes in at 2250, just under that. Um, and actually, even more than the, uh, the fragment we just looked at, I like the blade steel here even better. We've got Sandvix 12C27, kind of a, shares a similar lineage to the, uh, the 14C28 we saw on that Boker, or that Kershaw there at the beginning. Uh, it won't hold an edge as long, but it's gonna be a nice, tough stainless steel uh, and very easy to maintain. Uh, something, something about 12C27 I have always liked. We've also got a classic drop point shape, almost two and three quarters of an inch here, and a hollow grind in this case, I had to feel it to be sure. Uh, so it's gonna slice pretty well. You don't have too much thickness there at the spine, so it's not a, a really aggressive hollowed scoop out. It's gonna behave very nicely. The whole knife is gonna carry very nicely too, because look how slim that is. Gotta be careful, I almost dropped it. Uh, stainless steel on the handles, and rather than having the leaf spring and then you know the handles kind of scaled on either side of it, you've actually got a titanium, or, a, or a, sorry, a titanium, an integral construction with the stainless steel and just enough back spring kind of poking out here towards the front. You can actually see it in action, classic slip joint operation there, but you don't have, uh, you can do it with a little bit less bulk. It's really cool. Nice and slim, very easily pocketable. Right side tip up pocket clip, not completely deep carry, uh, but you can also get this in more of a plain uh, stainless steel type of finish rather than black. And you can also get that finish with uh, a two blade model or, or a two implement model that also comes with a pair of scissors, uh, but we've had that one for a little bit. That one's not strictly new which is why I'm not showing it in this particular video. Um, it's a pretty cool knife. I'm, I'm, the more I hold this, the more I uh, talk about it and, and show it to, to you guys, and, uh, and the more I play with it, the more I like it. Yeah, definitely check those out. I dig those. All right, next up, uh, we've got some new colors of the Leatherman Free T4. These are three of the five new colors here. Uh, we've got a couple blues, we've got a green. There's this kind of interesting yellow color, and I think the red though is definitely my favorite, especially if you're looking for something different than just a brushed stainless handle, which the standard versions come with. Uh, these are pretty nice and prices on these come in uh, just under 60 bucks. As far as the implements go, uh, they're kind of held in magnetically and they all lock open with this uh, side accessible lock. You've got two, uh, two sides of tools. So you've got a lock for each side of the knife. And I've always liked uh, the, this type of locking mechanism or I like what Leatherman did with this particular locking mechanism because you can unlock it and close it, keeping your fingers out of the path of the blade. I always appreciate that. Blade, of course, as you saw, is one hand openable, uh, about 2.2 inches in length, 420 HC, simple hollow ground drop point, good for day-to-day -day stuff for sure. And on that side, you've also got a nail file, or not nail file, but a double milled and single milled file with a driver on the, the end and another flathead driver on that side. And then on the back, several more implements, including scissors and a couple more drivers, a flathead and a Phillips, including a bottle opener there, which it earned its degree. It's technically graduated as a multi-tool now. And you've even got that pair of tweezers there. Really cool tools, some really cool new colors. And finally, last but not least, We've got an RMJ ashtray coming in at 125. Uh, and this is RMJ through and through. It's overbuilt, it's solid, single billet of aluminum. You know, it's, you'd be hard pressed to actually break this. Uh, so if you're dropping and breaking ashtrays all the time, this could work. Um, really cool finish. Uh, and if, if you're an RMJ collector, definitely worth a look. Uh, I would go nicely with his big aluminum billet valet trays. You might already have one of those. We actually got a new batch of those as well. Again, we'll, we'll leave a link to all of uh, all the RMJ accessories like this that we've got in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. 
Well, that's it for this week. I know it was uh, there was a lot to get through, so thanks for sticking around. Uh, let me know what you liked. Let me know what you didn't like, more importantly. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, as always, there will be links in the description where you can go over to the Knife Center and check them out. While you're over there, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program, too, because if you're going to spend your hard-earned money on one of these cool knives, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing out. See you next time.